Good morning, everyone. How is the Advent season going? Good. We have already lit the second Advent candle. That means it's already the second week of Advent. And before we realize, it will be all over. So let's intensify our preparation for the great celebration of the Nativity of our Savior. Normally, I know people by face. And I know where most of you sit. Well, occasionally some kind of uh, confused me because they changed their seats. Uh, the other day I came across a young person whom I had not seen for a while. So I called him aside and told him, you should join the army of the Lord. And he told me, Father, I am already in the army of the Lord. Then I said, how come I see you only for Easter and Christmas? And then he said, Father, it is because I am in the secret service. <laughs> We need to bring out all the people in the secret service, so I need your help. So during these coming days, please uh, announce and invite all the people who normally do not come to Mass, at least ask them to come to Mass. So I want you to use your social media like uh, Instagram, Snapchat, Facebook, Twitter, email, whatever, uh, to invite people to one of our Christmas Masses. We have four Masses on the Easter Vigil Day, that is on the 24th of December, and four Masses on Christmas Day. You can find the full uh, schedule of Masses in the, in the bulletin of today. It, is in, it will be coming out in the Catholic Voice. It is already there in our parish website. So please use your social media and let's do a wonderful job for Jesus and bring more people to experience the mercy of God. This coming Tuesday, when we celebrate the Feast of the Immaculate Conception, that is December 8th, the global church is beginning something new. Do you know what it is? Year of Mercy. Beautiful. Very good. You score full mark. <laughs> so the Holy Father, Pope Francis, has announced an extraordinary jubilee of mercy starting from December 8th, Feast of Immaculate Conception, and it will run through the Feast of uh, Christ the King on November 20th, 2016. And he has uh, announced the theme as the extra uh, for this Jubilee year as the mercy like, merciful like the Father. According to me, the timing of this Jubilee year is perfect and very pertinent because when you uh, look at the news, we know that the world is in trouble. There is so much of terrorism going on, there is violence going on, and it is important that the people of God experience the mercy of God in a very powerful way. So on December 8th, our Holy Father, Pope Francis, will open a special door in Vatican. Um, the, those who have been to Rome and Vatican City, you have seen St. Peter's Basilica. Normally, the door, uh, one door is kept closed, and it is opened only every 25 years years. But this year being the Jubilee year on uh, coming Tuesday, December 8th, the Holy Father is going to open that special door, the Jubilee door, and is inviting pilgrims to come through that door. And here in our diocese, our bishop, Michael Barber, will open a special door on coming Sunday. In fact, on Friday evening, last Friday evening, I was uh, in the cathedral for a mass, and I noticed that one door at the main entrance was kept closed. They have decorated with uh, some purple ribbons, and there is a little um, banner announcing the Jubilee year. So he's going to open that on coming Sunday at 10 a.m. In fact, the Holy Father, Pope Francis, has invited all the bishops with the cathedral to open a holy door in their respective cathedrals. So we as a parish will go sometime next year, probably in Lent, uh, on a pilgrimage to our cathedral and celebrate a Mass, and more importantly, pass through this holy door and receive many uh, graces and indulgences. Many of you go to confessions, and when you receive the absolution, the priest begins a prayer like this. Raising the hand over you, he says, God, the Father of mercies, that's a beautiful prayer with which uh, you are absolved. God, the Father of mercies. And the priest, the bishops, all those who absolve you, repeat that prayer numerous times. So much so, our bishop, Michael Barber, has chosen that in the court of arms. And when you go to the cathedral, if you look closely at the chair, at the back of the chair, these words are inscribed. 
God the Father of mercies. And I want all of us to experience the mercy of God in a very powerful way during this London season. How shall we do it? We have a communal penance service organized on December 21st at 7 p.m. We have invited 17 priests to come and uh, hear our individual confessions. So please come and experience the powerful mercy of God on December 21st, Monday evening at 7 p.m. I know some of you may be saying, oh, Advent time, oh, it's very busy. How can we do that? Yes, I know you're busy. You're buying gifts. You're packing gifts for the poor and for all the people, cooking, planning parties, going to parties. Please do all that, but make that evening free to experience the mercy of God in a very powerful way. There's a story told about a little boy who had just received the first Holy Communion and he was uh, traveling by car with his mother. And then it started raining. And the little boy told the mother, Mommy, I know what sin is. I think the sin is like the rain coming down on the car. And God is like the wiper, the, wi uh, the you know, windshield wiper that is wiping away the rain. God cleanses our sin. He wipes away our stain of sin through the sacrament of confession. And the mother, of course, said that's a very beautiful analogy. But I would like to go a step further. When I am driving my car, the wiper does not come automatically on. And I know maybe some of you got a very modern type of car. As soon as the rain hits, automatically the wipers start moving. Do you have such cars? I'm told they are, there, will, there is or there will be. Well, my car, I have to flip a switch on and the wiper comes on to remove that water from the, from the, uh, from the windshield. I'm telling that because we need to take a little extra step for God to absolve us, to forgive our sins. So take a little step, go to a priest, confess your sins, and uh, uh, God forgives your sins. So uh, make use of the sacrament of reconciliation during this season of Advent to be reconciled with God. You know, mercy is not an abstract idea. All of us parents, we know that we love our children. Father, mother loves the children very tenderly. So God, our loving Father, loves each one of us in a very special way. We heard in the first reading of today from Prophet Baruch, and here he says, rejoice that we are remembered by God. Rejoice, because we are remembered by God. God has not forgotten us. And that's what we read also in uh, Prophet Isaiah chapter uh, 49. I've written your name in the palm of my hand. Sometimes when I give communion, I look carefully at the palm of your hands. And sometimes, most of the time, it's very clean. Occasionally, I come across some palm with a phone number written. Or there is an email address. Or there is even a grocery list written on the palm. <laughs> well, God is not writing grocery list on his palm, but he's writing your name and my name. Why? He doesn't want to forget us. We are very precious, very important to him. In another translation, uh, we read, I have tattooed your name on the palm of my hand. You know, the tattoo? Some of you got tattoos, I know. Some of you try to remove the tattoos, and it's so very hard to remove the tattoos. It remains uh, pretty much permanent. And God loves us so tenderly that he doesn't want to forget us, and he has tattooed our name in the palm of his hands. And that's why in Psalm 136, we pray, for his mercy endures forever. His mercy endures forever. You know, God's mercy is uh, very real. During this Advent season and Christmas, we celebrate God becoming man. He enters into our broken world, showing us the mercy of God the Father. Jesus Christ becomes the visible sign of God's mercy. Jesus, while he lived, worked his uh, uh, public ministry, he was exemplary in showing God's Father's mercy. He healed the sick. He made the blind see, the deaf hear, the lame walk. He fed the 5,000. He raised Lazarus to life, you know, other people. So he wiped the tears of many people. So what is mercy? When love encounters suffering, it becomes mercy. Remember these words. When love encounters suffering, it becomes mercy. 
Holy Mother of the Church throughout its history has been practicing that acts of mercy in many ways. Churches run many hospitals, many orphanages, many care homes, nursing facilities. And our diocese here, we have been doing Catholic charities and Vincent de Paul. We have a ministry for uh, the, the prison. And our own parish here, yesterday we fed 55 uh, people with uh, fresh turkey uh, cooked warm meal. Every Saturday at 10.30, we have uh, about 50 to 80 people coming for a meal here. And St. Vincent de Paul has been doing charitable activity, corporal works of mercy for many, many uh, decades here in the parish. And there is a, a lovely prison ministry that is alive and active here in our community. So in many ways, Christians and faithful have practiced the corporal works of mercy as well as the spiritual works of mercy. There are seven each in the each list. And I want to ask you this morning, how involved are you in practicing the mercy of God? So this morning, I'd like to give you a practical lesson on uh, uh, spiritual works of mercy. One of the spiritual works of mercy is to pray for the living and the dead. So starting from today, we are going to pray for some member of our community. How are we going to do? We'll find a prayer partner, and you will find that uh, name of the person. You do not have to ask the, what intention you want to pray, because God in his uh, divine computer can put that together. So we only just ask the name of the person, and then during the prayers of the faithful, we will pause to pray for that prayer partner. And then throughout the mass or throughout the week, pray, remember to pray for that person. And next weekend, we will have a new prayer partner. And in that way, we can continue to practice the corporal, sorry, spiritual works of mercy. So at this moment, I am going to ask you to turn around and find one prayer partner for whom we are going to pray today at this Mass, okay? Uh, do, uh, please do not choose your spouse, your family members. Choose someone other than your family members, okay? Please turn around and find a prayer partner. If you need to get up, you can welcome to stand up and meet the people. Please do that. S speak for a few minutes, a few seconds. Okay, have you found a prayer partner? I know some of you are finding two or three, no problem. <laughs> okay, start with the one. If you want to pray for more people, that is perfect. I would like to give you also an example of a corporal works of mercy. Uh, this story is told to us by Mother Teresa. Uh, all of us, when we were deacon, you know, transitional deacons, we were asked or we were organized to go and meet Mother Teresa just before our ordination. So she gave us a little talk, and then she signed autograph in our uh, breviary, the prayer book for the priest and the deacons and the, uh, the religious. Uh, during that little uh, talk, she gave a story which has remained with me. I continue to remember that story. Someone informed Mother Teresa that there is a family of eight that has been not having food for several days. For three, four days, they had nothing, and they have not eaten. So Mother Teresa prepared a pot of rice. Rice is the staple food of India. So she cooked the rice, took the pot of rice to uh, the family, and then met the family, entered the house, and they were very joyful people. They were extremely famished, and the Mother Teresa said, this is for you. And then the mother of the family took that rice, divided into exactly two halves, took a half of the rice and went out of the home. And after a few minutes, she returned. And Mother Teresa asked the mother, where did you go with the rice? And she said, just like us, across the road, there is one family that has not eaten for the last three days. So what you gave, we wanted to share with them because they are also hungry like us. Beautiful. The poor people know how to share what they have. Out of their necessities, they share with others. And that is practicing corporal works of mercy, feeding the hungry. So dear friends, during this Jubilee year, I invite all of us to practice uh, both spiritual and corporal works of mercy. Contemplate on the face of Christ, who is mercy personified. 
participate in that great wave of mercy that emanates from the heart of Christ. If you do so, you will be filled with joy, peace, serenity, and long-lasting happiness. So let us be merciful like the Father. Let us be merciful like the Son, Jesus Christ. Amen.